Great. Well, thank you everyone for uh, attending this presentation. Uh, I'm going to be talking about conformal uncertainty sets for robust optimization. And as was mentioned before, this is joint work between myself and Bruce Cox. We're both faculty members at the Air Force Institute of Technology in uh, Dayton, Ohio, USA. So some contributions for the paper and kind of what we'll talk about in the presentation is that we kind of talk specifically and explicitly define Malanova's distance as a tool for multivariate conformal prediction, um, specifically ex defined as uh, explicitly as full conformal uh, prediction with Malanova's distance. We're also going to then use Malanova's distance to extend conformal prediction to a, an optimization framework called robust optimization and specifically introduce conformal uncertainty sets. And then we're going to go through a little bit of simulation as a proof of concept for this. So the first question of interest is, can we quantify uncertainty in a distribution-free manner? Well, you know, we're at a conference for conformal prediction, so the answer to this is yes, right? Um, usually when we talk about quantifying uncertainty, we talk about an interval that we're generating with respect to either a, uh, maybe a classification. Uh, in our case, we're talking about some regression. So we have some prediction Y hat that we kind of want to construct an interval around. And in the end, we want to capture the true response for some unobserved Y associated with some X in some interval with a specified probability. And that specified probability, we usually want to exceed uh, or be equal to one minus alpha, where alpha is our significance level. So as we've kind of talked about in the, the previous slides, the previous presentations, we can do this uh, very straight in a very straightforward manner with conformal inference. So under the assumptions of exchangeability, we can actually generate uh, prediction intervals through the use of conformity scores. So one example of a conformity score is this RI of YC that you see down here is the absolute value between some observed value yi and some predicted value yi as a function of some candidate value yc. So we actually train this uh, predictor on some augmented data set that includes some uh, new data tuple x and some candidate value yc. So we can actually do this and with some set of observations that again follow uh, exchangeability, we can create an interval, okay? That is uh, the c conform minus alpha, that's a function of x, um, and actually construct an interval that follows our concept of validity. Okay? And we also have at the bottom here uh, what we would call or maybe relate to a p-value. Okay? So we've kind of already talked about this. We also have a similar uh, extension that's been talked about split conformal prediction intervals where instead of generating a new predictive model or a new classification model for any candidate value, we can partition our data set into a proper training set and calibration set I1 and I2 respectively. We can train our predictor on the observations in I1, generate conformity scores using I2, and then uh, generate that prediction interval utilizing those conformity scores uh, in this manner specifically. So we have some prediction for our new observation or new response Y, and then we sort of add endpoints uh, to this prediction where S in this case is uh, basically the one minus alpha quantile uh, associated with our conformity scores. So we'd like to get into a little bit now, okay, how do we extend conformal prediction to the multivariate case? And what I mean by that is what if we, instead of just Y being some uh, response that's associated with an X value, what if Y is multidimensional? So what if each observation YI is a D dimension vector? Okay, well, the same sort of approach if we assume exchangeability instead of uh, between these data tuples XI, YI, um, we now have between these data exchangeability between these data tuples XI and this vector YI. And we have a slightly different distributional assumption just to reflect that we are dealing with a D dimensional response. Well, in the same manner as before, we'd still like to create specifically a prediction region that captures the observed uh, response value with, again, uh, probability at least one minus alpha. Okay, so in, the, in terms of conformal prediction, uh, this has been explored by all of the uh, works you see uh, here and others. So this isn't a new idea, but we just wanted to explain and get into this background so that we can build into the robust optimization piece that we're introducing. So along with the joint uh, conformal prediction case, we also need to kind of identify a multivariate conformity score. So in this case, we take a very a special interest in the conformity score that you see here, which is the square root of some 
quadratic form between a vector of univariate conformity scores and their uh, sample or their estimated inverse covariance. Now, if we specifically choose this univariate conformity score to be not the absolute difference, but just the difference between the, say, the kth dimension of our observed y vector um, and the kth dimension of the predicted y vector, again, as a function of, um, here we have as a function of just the kth dimension of the candidate value, but this could also be a function of the general candidate vector. Well, if we, if we choose this, uh, this residual, if you will, this actually re results in Malinois distance being our multivariate conformity score or an estimated version of Malinois distance as our conformity score. So we can actually use this in the same way and generate a p-value associated with um, this collection of now um, conformity scores that are constructed in a multivariate fashion, but are in, um, now we've kind of reduced them to one dimension. So we slightly adjust our p-value function to reflect this uh, multi-dimensional conformity score. And then we have similar uh, construction of both the full conformal regions, prediction regions, and the split conformal regions. Again, where uh, with respect to the split conformal region, S is some uh, specifically the uh, one minus alpha quantile associated with observations in our calibration set. So we can kind of see that we can do this in a multivariate case now. But the question is, how do we utilize this uncertainty quantification, especially in a multivariate sense where we can't really um, visualize this in dimensions higher than two. We can't just construct a simple interval. How do we use this uh, measure of uncertainty in a decision-making environment uh, with respect to, we have to make a decision, we are uncertain about certain things. How can we entertain and utilize uh, the quantified uncertainty? So this has been talked about in this uh, symposium a couple of times. Um, and also with respect to say, decision-making utilizing conformal predictive systems as well. Um, but I want to introduce another method that is inherently uh, up until this point unrelated to conformal pred prediction that explicitly utilizes a measure of uncertainty in the decision-making process. So this optimization methodology is called robust optimization. Robust optimization is specifically used to minimize what we call the worst case scenario or the worst case objective function for a given decision under uncertainty. So formally, we have this uh, function for which we are trying to find the best decision Z in some feasible space script Z uh, over the supremum of U, which is a collection of random parameters that we may or may not have observations with respect to that we allow it to vary inside this script U, which we identify as the uncertainty set. And we are trying to um, optimize res with respect to this function C, which is a function of Z and U. Okay, so we are trying to uh, minimize the supremum of C of Z and U. Now, uncertainty sets within the robust optimization framework, they act as a dial, really. So the larger the uncertainty set, the more robust we are to uncertainty within these parameter, random parameters U. The larger uncertainty sets, are associated with a higher degree of risk aversion. So in this, in this problem, we're not really optimizing um, over the expected value. We're not trying to make the best decision on average. We're just trying to protect ourselves from very, very bad case decisions, worst case decisions. So we'll kind of walk through a little bit uh, of an example in the next slide, but I just wanted to I, I explain this idea of an uncertainty set because the terminology maybe is a little bit um, ambiguous because um, I know we've kind of seen uncertainty sets with respect to uh, prediction intervals as well. So this uncertainty set, it can be just something as simple as limiting each index of our random parameters on some interval, maybe by some lower uh, value alpha j for the jth dimension and some upper value uh, b bar for the jth dimension of our set of random parameters, which really just constructs this hypersphere in d dimensions that allows our, um, this problem, our uncertain parameters to vary within that. We can also generate these uncertainty sets with, you know, pick your favorite Q norm. Okay, so we can construct um, UQ where Q is some norm and we can limit the uncertainty in that way. So if we pick a specific Q, say one, we're 
kind of bounding on uncertainty by some uh, diamond, if you will. Uh, if we pick two, we're limiting our uncertainty by some sphere, some hypersphere with radius omega. Now, what we can also do is we can, if we specifically pick a Q of two, we can also kind of stretch and rotate that sphere to create an ellipsoid. And we can actually generate what we call ellipsoidal uncertainty sets. So it kind of um, makes the uncertainty sets a little bit more complex than just a, a diamond or a sphere. Now, the thing we don't have so far is there is no probability associated with these uncertainty sets. We can pick omega in any way we see fit. The larger omega is, the more robust we are to these uncertainties. But we can, if we'd like, we can attach probabilistic um, bounds, if you will, or probabilistic traits for an ellipsoidal uncertainty set. So under the assumptions of normality, basically normality on our random parameters u, if we construct the uncertainty set in the ellipsoidal fashion with a very specific A, specifically A chosen to be the lower triangular matrix of the Kolesky decomposition for the estimated inverse covariance matrix, well, results show that um, this, or rather Malinova's distance, which is if we square this value, we get our Malinova's distance, under normality, Malinova's distance is chi-squared distributed, and with um, d dimensions, it is chi-squared distributed with d degrees of freedom. So we can sort of utilize that to attach probability to these uncertainty sets. Um, the only thing is, we still have this assumption of normality, and that's kind of the whole reason um, we're doing this in the first place, is to avoid this assumption or to do something different. So uh, we'll kind of move into that in the next section, but I just wanted to give a quick example of robust optimization in general and kind of walk through the intuition behind it. So we have our initial uh, formulation here where we want to minimize the supremum of Z transpose U. So we have some linear function we're trying to minimize. Our decision that we are making is Z. U is something that we can't control. U is something that nature controls to hurt us the most. Okay, so specifically, I, I didn't mention this in the in the uh, when I was introducing this, but robust optimization in this case is actually a two-player game. It's some, uh, with respect to game theory. Okay, so I make a decision, nature tries to hurt me as much as possible with respect to staying in this uncertainty set U. Now we also have some constraints here. Um, these are a little bit redundant, but I, we put them in there for completeness. Really, we want to make sure that our decisions, which vary or um, are limited between zero and one, we want to make sure they add to one. We specifically, again, design our uncertainty set um, in, a, in sort of an oracle fashion. We design it to be ellipsoidal, but we kind of know the mean and we know the, the variance in this case. So this allows us to just walk through this example. So what this kind of looks like visually is off to the left, we have the feasible solution, or yes, the, the feasible set, excuse me. So our uh, decision can lie along this simplex, uh, anywhere from zero, one, to, or excuse me, one zero to zero one is what we want Z to lie along. Uh, off to the right, we have our uncertainty set, which is defined by the mean and the covariance matrix. And we've specifically chosen this uncertainty set um, to be generated uh, with an omega equal to two. So what, there's some probability associated with that, but we chose omega versus uh, a probability. Uh, well, these red pluses uh, across the, the simplex are suboptimal solutions. Okay, so if I pick point that's labeled the red plus labeled one, nature then selects the equivalent red plus labeled one to hurt me the most. If I select the decision uh, labeled by the red plus in number two, the nature will then select the equivalent point uh, two. Okay, so those two points do not minimize my objective function the most. So the decision that actually minimizes the objective function with respect to this two-player game where nature can hurt me as much as nature can within this uncertainty set is actually optimized when Z1 and Z2 is 0.5 and 0.5. The uh, solution that hurts me, um, that is the best worst case for me, is then 1.73, 1.73. So in an intuitive sense, this is kind of what we're trying to do with this robust optimization. So now the, the real question is, Knowing how we've constructed uh, uncertainty sets under normality or ellipsoidal uncertainty sets, 
can we utilize conformal prediction, specifically conformal prediction regions generated using Malanova's distance as the conformity score, or rather the, the square root of Malanova's distance as the conformity score? Can we utilize that in robust optimization to generate uncertain thesis? Well, yes, yes, we can. And in this case, when we utilize specifically split conformal prediction methods to generate these uncertainty sets, we sort of make the multivariate prediction region or the joint prediction region uh, for some alpha equivalent to an uncertainty set. And by doing that, we actually uh, assign a uh, probability for being within this uncertainty set. And this is a finite sample valid conservative probability just by the inherent results of conformal inference uh, in, to include split conformal inference. Uh, we select Malanova's distance, or rather the square root of Malanova's distance, because it immediately aligns with the, un, the ellipsoidal uncertainty sets that we saw in the previous slides. So without any extra construction, we have an uncertainty set that uh, provides validity in a probabilistic sense, but makes no assumptions about the normality of our random parameters. Now, what we do is we limit it to, we're not dealing with covariates in this sense. We, we define it in this way, but uh, our examples don't deal with covariates at all. We're just looking at the observations themselves. But if we were to extend this, we could uh, further incorporate machine learning methods and inference into this robust optimization paradigm. So let's kind of uh, make this explicit. Okay, so. This is how we define our uncertainty sets with respect to being generated in the split conformal fashion. So really what we're looking for is our, what was previously, previously defined as S. We wanted to find, uh, find S that is the uh, quantile associated, or the one minus alpha quantile associated with our collection of conformity scores. So we kind of translate this to align with the uncertainty set fashion and we attach an alpha to it. So our S in this case is this omega alpha. Then our ellipsoidal uncertainty set that we generate through conformal prediction actually looks like this. So we have constructed just by the uh, taking the quantile one minus alpha quantile effectively of our conformity scores, we get our um, radius of our ellipse, uh, uh, ellipse, if you will. We also have to construct an estimate of our inverse covariance matrix, specifically because we're going and constructing in this fashion, we have to not only estimate uh, our inverse covariance matrix, but construct also the Kolesky decomposition to get this ellipsoidal shape. Now, it's important to point out that the inverse covariance matrix, uh, and I think this is a little bit uh, misleading, um, we construct the covariance matrix with observations in I2, but then we generate uh, univariate covariance, uh, univariate conformity scores I'm sorry, we generate the inverse covariance matrix, the estimate from samples in I1 using some conformity scores with the ob observations in I1, but then we complete this process and calculate omega alpha using observations from I2. And that I think is a little bit more clear in, in the paper, but there is some, some technical um, bookkeeping, if you will, as far as what do we construct um, the Kolesky decomposition with and what do we construct the univariate con conformity scores with. So now to, to look at this problem and to simulate to see if we actually do well, what we do is we extend our sort of toy example to D dimensions. So previously we had two dimensions, but in our simulation case, we do it with two and uh, 10 dimensions. But we still have the same sort of uh, simplex constraints. We want all our observations to add to one, and we want them to be between zero and one. In addition to this, our simulation setup, we wanted to make sure that um, we looked at multiple different distributions, multiple different covariance structures, different significance levels, and different dimensions. So um, our random parameters that we use to construct our uncertainty sets and subsequently use to perform our robust optimization, we differ from, uh, say, normality in some cases, t distributed in others. Again, we're not worried about covariates. We're not worried about the prediction methodology per se. We also have sort of three covariant structures, some IID, some independent but not identically distributed, um, and some that are correlated. We're looking to assess coverage um, from a nominal perspective, overall efficiency, and in the you know, multivariate case, this is you know, the volume, if you will, of our 
uh, prediction regions, equivalently uncertainty sets. We also want to look at what we call an alpha worst case performance result. So this is common in robust optimization when you construct uncertainty sets that are supposed to have some probabilistic bounds. You also look at the um, performance of that specific worst case. So if I want to be robust to 95% of the uncertainty, well, I would look at alpha of 0 0.5, 0 0.05 worst case performance on um, some out of sample cases. We're also going to compare our, thank you. We're also going to compare our uh, conformal uncertainty sets to traditional uncertainty sets, as well as optimization under um, just linear optimization. So what that is, is we have some observations, but instead of making assumptions about the distribution, whether that be normal or using conformal uncertainty sets, we just take the overall average for these observations and utilize that in our optimization. So we're doing it in expectation rather than some worst case performance. So we'll just get right into the results here. So this is for D equals two, and specifically this is coverage. Okay, this is coverage with respect to some P distributed costs. So off the bottom, we have our different covariance structures. And what we see is that as um, our significance level increases from 0.05 to 0.5, the uncertainty sets constructed under normality become worse. They become much too conservative um, for our liking, whereas the conformal uncertainty sets, conformal prediction regions, um, they are centered around nominal. So this is what we get for free with conformal prediction. So now we're going to get into the results that are actually from the robust optimization. And what we want to see is lower worst case values. So if we look at this, the three sort of box plots in each group is uh, performance under the nominal, where we just have data, we take the mean and we optimize, performance under a conformal uncertainty set, and performance under a uh, uncertainty set under normality. But what we see is that our uh, for lower values of alpha, the conformal uncertainty sets and the uncertainty, traditional uncertainty sets perform better than the uncertainty set or than the, the nominal case, which again is, a, is that is the trade off between robustness and average performance. Now, what we also see is as we are robust to less uncertainty, the performance of the nominal case gets better. Okay. So, again, that goes to the trade off between robustness and um, the average case. Well, one of the issues is in higher dimensions, we actually don't get intuitively what we think we should get. We see that the minimum worst case or minimized worst case for the normal uncertainty sets is actually better than conformal uncertainty sets um, in, until we get to higher values of alpha, which um, doesn't, to me, doesn't make intuitive sense. We are more, uh, we are closer to nominal. And while I didn't show it here, these conformal uncertainty sets are actually more efficient in a lot of cases than these uh, uncertainty sets under normality. So not an ideal result here, um, but we can see that we're kind of still along, um, you know, still competitive, if you will, but definitely not better than assumptions uh, under normality when constructing these uncertainty sets. So moving forward, we'd, we'd really like to explore that result. Why, when these uncertainty sets prediction regions are, are better in efficiency and better in uh, coverage, why do they perform worse? Uh, one, of the one of the reviewers suggested that the um, lack of coverage kind of nullifies any performance for the uh, normal uncertainty sets as far as efficiency is concerned. So I think going into that discussion would be beneficial. We'd also like to better quantify the trade-offs between uh, the robust optimization performance and the nominal performance. Uh, this is kind of a simulation example, so we'd like to explore this in practical applications and see um, what occurs. We used uh, malanobis distance to create an ellipsoidal uncertainty set, while there are also uncertainty sets called polyhedral uncertainty sets that are defined by a series of linear inequalities. So we'd like to explore the creation potentially of polyhedral conformal uncertainty sets, specifically through the use of half space depth as our conformity score, which uh, has been explored um, at least in one paper with respect to multivariate informal prediction. Uh, we'd also like to look at generating uncertainty sets as a function of covariates. Um, and we'd also like to extend to uncertainty within the constraints. So in our example, we only have uncertainty with respect to our objective function. 
not with respect to any object or anything in the constraints. So we'd like to extend to within constraint uncertainty and potentially extending to applying probabilistic bounds on the on constraint violation. Okay, because if we don't know data and we use some nominal value and the new data comes in, we could actually violate some of the constraints that are crucial to our optimization performance. Um, that's all I have. So uh, thank you for your time. I really enjoyed presenting to all of you and hearing all your talks this far.